people, then that's, that's dangerous also. If you're uh, with people who uh, have very different ideas of um, what life's about or different ideas of the right ways to, to behave, you can just lose your, your, your whole anchor and sense of uh, groundedness if you simply try to take the path of least resistance. You want to be popular, you want to be loved by everyone and liked by everyone. So th this is why the, those precepts which I was speaking about at the beginning are so important. You say, well yes, I'm willing to compromise um, in other areas in terms of what I like personally or what's, you know, what, I, what I think is um, enjoyable not enjoyable, but you know, not um, not going to uh, break any precepts just to make other people happy. So that, there has to be that that sense of integrity, uh, also. So the um, learning learning from communities and the values of communities and what you can give uh, to communities. We we can all uh, we can all um, give something, and the act of uh, of giving is uh, something which brings immediate and lasting joy to to life. In in Buddhism, we talk about making merit, and often in terms of giving. And it's a and this Buddhist teaching says that if you give without any desire for anything in return, you make a lot more merit than if you give with hope of something in return. So, you know, what does that mean? The whole idea of merit is maybe a kind of difficult one to, uh, to grasp sometimes. But uh, let, let's take an example. If you um, recall um, some occasion in the past in which you, you gave um, something, it might have been money, it might have been a material object, it might have been um, time, it might have been anything which you, you gave without any desire for anything in return at all. Now, I think you'll notice that even if that event took place five years ago, or ten years ago, or twenty years ago even, or thirty years ago even, or however, um, the moment you think about it, it feels really good. And just feel really warm and bright and um, happy. Whereas if uh, there was some occasion in the past where you gave uh, some support, you gave some money, gave uh, with some desire for some material advantage or perhaps just to, for, to be admired or to be liked or to be uh, well known or whatever, um, after some time has passed, you, you can think of that, remember it, and you just feel kind of nothing. Mm. So, um, so what the Buddha is saying here is that when we give without any desire for anything in return, we actually we create um, like a treasure in our hearts and one which is accessible to us throughout our lives. Even in times when we're in desperate straits or we're in, in great physical pain, just the recollection of the good actions that we have performed in the past are an immediate kind of salve or, or balm on the mind. And it's something that you carry around with you. Everywhere. And that's what merit means. <clears throat> Whereas when you do things, quite, quite uh, admirable things, but there is some desire for something, you may well receive that short-term benefit, that worldly benefit. But in terms of some kind of spiritual uh, resource, spiritual power, something that you can turn your mind towards at any time and, and, and feel sustained, then, then that's not going to happen. <clears throat> so living with others gives us, um, in communities, gives us um, many opportunities to, to give in this way, creating happiness um, around us, but also creating long-term inner inner benefits and sense of brightness and uplift. And the more we um, let go of 
our attachment to our own likes and dislikes and what we want, what we like, what we don't like, then uh, that sense of community, inner community, of being all in this together, we're all in the same boat, we're all, as they say in Buddhist idiom, companions in birth, old age, sickness and death becomes very uh, very clear and, and we see that that kind of selfish, everyone out for themselves kind of idea um, is in fact um, quite an unintelligent uh, idea. So uh, just to illustrate this, I, I've got a little story I'd like to tell you. Um, so I was telling people this morning, I'll tell you again. And it's about a farm and uh, the, in this farm they like to eat cheese and there's a little mouse who likes to eat cheese as well. So the mouse likes to uh, creep into the house and uh, eat some of the cheese. I mean, only just a very small amount. Um, but the, the farmer doesn't like it, the farmer's wife doesn't like it, so they put down a trap. And the mouse sees the trap and is very frightened, runs out of the house and calls a meeting with his friends, and his friends there's a cow, and a pig, and a chicken. And he said, friends, uh, we're in trouble. The, the, um, the farmers put down a mouse trap. You know, if I go in there at night time and they move it around, you know, I could be killed. I know I really need my friends to, um, to help me out here and, and speak to the farmer and ask him to take this thing away. I mean, I just take a very small amount of cheese. It's not only leftovers anyway. And, <clears throat> and the cow said, ah, that's your problem. I, I don't have enough time for that. You know, I'm, I'm out in the field all day. Do you know how much grass I have to eat in order to fill my stomach? You know, it's just to, I don't have time for that. Your, your petty problems. And the pig says, uh, Oh, I, I, I just don't get on with a farmer, you know, we just don't see eye to eye. We're always, you know, I speak to him, he doesn't listen, and, and um, uh, it's a big waste of time. Sorry. Then the chicken says, oh, I'm not, I said, and the chicken doesn't like the mouse, and he just finds some kind of excuse. He's not going to, none of them want to help. Poor old mouse, isolated, none of his friends are going to help him. That night, a snake goes up into the house, gets its tail caught in the, in the mouse trap and uh, doesn't die, there's a lot of pain and the farmer's wife comes to the kitchen in the morning and the angry frightened snake bites the housewife and <clears throat> so she's in a lot of pain and uh, doctor comes and puts some kind of salve on it, it doesn't look good so she's very ill and very weak and so uh, of course uh, what do you give a very uh, sick weak person to eat um, chicken soup. So, so the farmer goes out and wrings the chicken's neck, makes chicken soup for the uh, for the woman. She's still not getting better. And of course, those days the communication not very well. They don't have very good. They don't have cars and things. You can't just go in the morning, come back in the evening. So there's a steady stream of people coming uh, to visit, spending overnight, and they're running out of food. So what can he do? So farmer kills a pig to make some. Uh, pork chops and and uh, feed all his guests. Poor lady, she still doesn't get better, and then she dies. And they have a um, they have a funeral. So many people come for this funeral. How are you going to feed them all? Just have to kill the cow and and um, feed all the guests at the funeral. So sad story. The chicken and the pig and the cow all die because they wouldn't help their poor friend, the mouse, uh, to ask the farmer to take the mouse trap out of the house. So this is um, one of these old stories for children that I love, and I think good for adults as well. I mean, um, I'm, it reminds me, I don't know if anyone, and I can't remember this um, verbatim, but there's a poem, I think, written by um, a Christian a German pastor called Bonhoeffer, um, um, in the Second World War and he says, he says about the Nazis, you know, first they came for the, the brown shirts and we thought, you know, it sort of serves them right, nothing to do with us, and they came for the communists and we thought, well, it's nothing to do with us. Then they came for the, 
um, for the gays and the gypsies, nothing to do with us, and they came for the Jews, and nothing came for us, and now they come for the, the, the Christian pastors, <laughs> and it's too late. So this idea, you know, that, that we, we're saying, well, just look after me and mine, and just let everyone else um, look after themselves, um, is not, <coughs> uh, it's, it's not only wrong, but it's not in the, in the long-term and intelligent uh, way of caring for communities. So, um, so today I've given a um, discourse about the seven Sapurisa Dhammas. So just to give you a, a recap on those, and if you have like a Buddhist dictionary, or you have, uh, you can look them up when you're home. And so there's uh, there's the 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 dham, at, atta and dhamma, which is like the the causes and the results, or the the methods and the goals, and then um, knowing self, knowing the right amount or the optimum amount, knowing time and place, uh, knowing individual, and knowing the community. So uh, that would be the end of my talk this afternoon.